everyone. Today, we are going to be looking at how we can create custom Excel functions that run uh, optimized machine learning models right in the browser or right locally in your Excel client with JavaScript using Onyx Runtime Web. The two models that we're going to be showing is how to do sentiment analysis, which you have seen in previous videos on this channel if you've checked those out. Um, but then there's a new one that we're going to be looking at, which is question and answer, which allows you to ask a question, give it context, and it gives you an answer. For example, the image you see over here that is um, asking what the city is in the address, and then it's able to take that text in, find what the city is, and then return it in the cell. So let's take a look at how we can build this. So if we scroll down, we can see that um, and turn the project, if you grab the project that is on my GitHub that already has everything built and you just have to run it, all you need then is Node and um, the ability to use Excel. If you are going to start from scratch, then you can use the, uh, you'll need the CLI from Office that creates the template project that gets you started to create add-ins for all of the Office products. So if you're not familiar with what custom functions are in Excel, you're likely familiar with native functions where you can hit equal and sum and it'll add to, you know, cells together or different things like that. So this is that same idea. It's a function that's going to work right in Excel, but we're going to create our own that's going to run machine learning models. For this walkthrough, I'm going to assume that you are going to just grab the project directly from the repo that has everything built out. So you would go ahead and uh, clone this project. And then from there, we show you right here that obviously if you are familiar with NPM, you know you need to run NPM install and NPM build. Um, once you do that, you'll be able to just run the project as is by um, running this command, sending in the URL of an Excel document, or starting it in the desktop by running this command. So here's what that command looks like. Um, go to the root of your project, and then you just do run web document, and then I have my own document here. So if I hit enter on this, it's going to build my add-in. Once that loads up, you'll see the Onyx Runtime logo over here, and you can see the task pane. You're actually able to um, add different functions within here. I just added some informational about how to use this plugin. Um, and you can see this is how it works. So if we were to do, uh, actually, I'll just double click here. So you do equals ORT, and then you have sentiment. You send in the one that you want. It thinks, and then it returns back. And then same with the question. So it's equals ORT question, send in the question and it returns the response. Now, if we would want to run this in the local version of Excel, we can get a blank workbook by going back to our um, terminal. And we can see now we have a blank workbook with this installed so equals or to dot. And we can see it working locally. The other thing that we're able to do here as well is attached to a debugger. And then we're able to actually debug with our Chrome tools right in Excel. Um, and you can see here is that output here from the different um, console.logs from this. So we're able to debug it with um, the tooling in Edge, either if we're running it in the Excel client or if we're running it on the web. Next one thing you'll see in the project is the manifest XML. If we jump to the manifest, you'll see there's some important uh, configurations here. One, the provider um, and the namespace. We're setting the icon URL. If you want to learn more about the manifest, I recommend checking out this doc, which is also linked in the blog, which will go over some more of the uh, metadata points within the XML file. Next, if you take a look at the source here, we have the commands, the functions, and the uh, task pane. We're, we are working with functions, so we're going to go into the functions TS. And this first one here uh, was one of the default ones that was in the template, which I just kind of leave as an example. Um, but you'll see that we are going to be importing our logic that actually runs inference for both the models. And here we set up the information for each function. So for example, um, here we're saying it returns the sentiment of a string. Um, this gives the parameter information to Excel. Um, and for the sentiment one, we're just taking in the string that we want to get the sentiment for. For the uh, question one, we need to get the actual question and then the context that has the answer that we need to extract from the question. 
first, let's jump into the inference sentiment file. Here we are importing uh, BERT processing and our BERT tokenizer, as well as the emoji um, mapping. And if we take a quick look at those, we, these are the emojis that uh, are mapped to our inference result. We have our BERT processing, which creates our model input, and it is getting it into the correct format. And then it's also creating the ORT tensors uh, from these input IDs, attention mask and token type IDs in order to uh, process input. Uh, the tokenizer is an augmented version of the TensorFlow tokenizer um, that's been just slightly updated for our use case. If we go back to our inference sentiment, we are going to be pulling in our model. And one important thing to understand about making sure your model gets packaged is that we are using uh, web, the Webpack config. And within the Webpack config, there is a copy plugin. And this is going to copy different assets to the uh, dist folder, which is what's actually deployed. So if we scroll down here, we can see in the copy plugin that we are copying anything that is in the BERT models uh, .onyx. So uh, both of these models will get uh, packaged for deployment. Our vocab.json, which is needed for um, the vocabulary for the tokenizer, as well as the onyx runtime wasm files. So this is our uh, web assembly that's compiled that allows onyx runtime web to use the wasm backend. So we're going to need the wasm files, we're going to need the onyx files, and we're going to need our uh, vocab. So what that does, if you take a look over here um, in the uh, distribution folder, you can see that we have the wasm. Uh, files, you can see that we have our models. These are all just copied over to the root directory. You could add a different uh, folder and, and have a subfolder if you want for those. And then you will also see our, and you'll also see the vocab.json here as well. So then when we go to inference the sentiment, we get the text string. We are going to create our ORT inference session, which if you've used Onyx Runtime Web or any, any real version of Onyx Runtime, you're very familiar with this. Here we can set our execution provider to either WASM or WebGL. Then we are going to create our session. We are going to load our tokenizer, and then we are going to get the encoded result uh, from the text that was sent in. Here is where that BERT processing model input gets created, where we send in our encoded text, and then it uh, formats it into ORT tensors, which is the actual model input that needs to be sent into our session dot run. And then uh, we're giving it the label for the output. So this is actually running our session here. We get our output. Once we have a result, we have to do um, our post-processing. From there, we return our results list, which has our emotion and score. That comes back to our result, and then we're returning that as a string, and that gets populated into our Excel file. Now let's take a look at the question function and jump into our inference question logic. Again, here we have our question answer. Um, pre and post processing logic. And again, this is one that has been augmented from TensorFlow uh, for our use case. Here we can, this is going to look the same as before. Um, we're doing the same process here, getting our model, creating our session, setting our execution providers, uh, creating our session with our session options. And then we are creating our model input, which is part of, again, that question answer. This one was uh, grabbing our tokenizer here, uh, cleaning up our text a bit if needed. Um, this one's a bit different though, because we have to be able to post-process with our original tokens and we need to map those results. So here we get our query tokens, we get our original tokens, um, and then we also get um, all doc tokens. And what this ends up returning is our input IDs, our input mask, our segment IDs, our original tokens, and then our token to original map. And it's gonna return it in a feature object. So let me get back our encoded uh, feature. And from there, we have to do a bit more pre-processing. We need to create arrays for the inputs. And then just like before, we have to change those two big ints in order to create our ORT tensors. And then from there, we're going to create this onyx value map, which is actually the type for the model input. And then we're sending in the values and making sure our labels match what the 
input labels are for the Onyx model. The other thing we're doing here is setting up our output names, which um, in the inference session, it's namespace, it is the uh, fetches type. So that's what the output object is named. Again, we actually could uh, just send in this array as our output. We wouldn't necessarily have to um, declare the types, which is how we did it in the previous one. Then just like before, we run our inference, we send in our model input and our uh, output names. So the output for this model is the start logits and the end logits. From there, we're gonna call get best answer, and that's gonna return our answer array. And we're gonna send in the original tokens and the map to the original tokens, and then the context itself, as well as our inference result of the start and end. In order to get the answer, we need to get the best index for the start and the best index for the end. So this will be the start and end within the context of the index of the words that were the answer. It's then going to get the text and it's going to convert it back to uh, the original text, push that answer into an array, and we're going to turn that array back to our question answer logic. Then this is going to give us our answers to our question. And then the result, we are going to return the first index or the best highest score. So if we were to go back and hit enter on this, now you know what's happening. And if you take a look over here, you can see uh, the different output for the inference. So we can see what our encoded looks like. We can see, um, so this is just our sentence encoded into the IDs. We can see what our model input looks like, which are attention IDs and our token type IDs and our attention mask. Here you can see the output results. And then from there, you can see the mapping of the result spreadsheet. So if we do the same thing with the question, we can see our original tokens, can see our input um, IDs, mask, and segment, and see the encoded result, and then you can see the uh, start and end, so that's the input result. And then from there, you can see uh, the answers that were returned. Um, so you can see the first one which we returned was uh, Redmond, and you can see the start index and the end index and then it just prints out the one that we returned. So you can see all of that, and we can also set breakpoints and step through this for different debugging purposes. So there you go. That's how we were able to create custom functions in Excel with an add-in using JavaScript, and then we leverage Onyx Runtime Web in order to be able to inference our models efficiently and locally. Also in the additional resources, you can look at different ways where you could publish these add-ins to be used, and you can actually create plugins for any of the Office products using these um, templates. So I hope that was helpful and thanks for hanging out.